All right, finishing up with my second love of the day, Sam Laporta, who's ADP on DLF we've got at 22.8. He's the tight end three, but he was drafted as the tight end two in the NFL draft. Now, Sam Laporta is another one of these players where his just raw stats from college aren't super impressive when you look at him, and it requires a little bit of context with that I.O. offense being absolute garbage. Now, he did... <laughs> really lead that offense though uh he was their main weapon and he's another one where if you look at like the advanced metrics he looks really good there he's also very athletic which is exactly what we want drafted very early in the second round as i said he was the second tight end drafted off the board ahead of michael mayer which was a little bit of a surprise i think for most people and finally goes to the detroit lions which is an offense on the rise doing big things and they're another team where the depth chart was wide open for him. Like, I don't see how he isn't the instant day one starter there for the Lions. And that's a good place to be. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. All of it. In fact, it kind of leads in, spoiler, into the next thing we're going to talk about. But yeah, that for sure, I like all the things you just said because he he checks a lot of those boxes and, and walking into an immediate opportunity on an offense that has a little bit of room to grow in an opening. I kind of like that that recipe. Yeah, now speaking of leading things in, why don't you go ahead with that? (laughs) Yeah, so we're going to get into some of the players that we don't necessarily like as much at their ADP, and I'm going to start right away with Dalton Kincaid. And I I want to make this clear at the very top of this. I have no no problems with Dalton Kincaid. I love his profile, his production. Exactly. It's all about ADP. And for anyone that missed it, yesterday was apparently Dalton Kincaid Day on Twitter. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so this tweets are still there. So go check them out. If you missed it. Um, I like him. I like him a lot. And I know that he represents kind of that lottery ticket if he hits. Right. Mm-hmm. But you're, we're talking, I've seen him right around the one Oh seven range, you know, when yeah. people like Jordan Addison, Zay flowers, I mean, there are still people on the board that are in better spots, similar draft capital, like in tight ends, if they don't hit their value depreciates so hard compared to other positions that it becomes something you don't recover from that 107 pick if he doesn't hit. So if I've got a team that's tight end needy, I would rather take the stab on Sam Laporta, who you just mentioned, than than spinning up and, and, and paying that Kincaid price right now. And you can't knock the landing spot. The landing spot's not bad. Landing in Buffalo, and I know all the talk on Twitter yesterday was he's going to be just a big slot, uh, which, geez, it seems like we heard that just a couple seasons ago, and it didn't necessarily work out the way we all envisioned. So there's a long history of rookie tight ends not uh, paying off for not being an ROI for what you invest initially. And for that, I, I'll, I'll stick with the Laporta at his cost versus Kincaid. Yeah, it's tough because I don't want to have to draft him this highly, but the way the draft that this draft class kind of worked out, he kind of got pushed up into the first round, and then he started to climb in that first round. Uh, I personally cannot get him ahead of any of the first round wide receivers. Uh, so one ten, I've got him there, and I'm I will take him there, but I still don't really like doing it. In fact, anytime I've had a pick like that, I've I've tried to get out of that pick range if you can get to the middle of the second from that spot and take sam Porter, like you said and collect something on top i think it's a great thing to do uh at the end of the day those are similar bets with dalton kincaid having a little bit better draft capital actually going within the first round although they're like i think it's like 13 picks difference between the two of them the going first yeah. round absolutely matters uh but i yeah like just going sam laporta later and getting something on top, Don Kincaid. It's, it's I, I like him. him. It's, it's just still a, it's still a risky bet, right? And and you got to think about it too from from the positional aspect. If you're sitting at 107, you didn't have a stellar season, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's fair to say that you had a pretty mediocre season. You won some games, you lost some games, and you didn't win the win the championship. Were you a rookie tight end away from winning? I mean, <laughs> right. Is that is that what you want to drop? you know, your, your first yeah. round pick on. And, and that's, that's where it gets hard for me as I look at the rest of my roster and I'm like, I've got other needs here. And 
tight end feels more expendable in this range for that cost that I, as much as I like Kincaid, I just can't get behind the cost. It's, it's really tough to take a player at that point in a rookie draft that you can't count on to actually help your team. It you're, we're, right. we're, ho- we're hoping, um, but you can have much more hope that a player like Jordan Addison or Quentin Johnston or Zay Flowers will help you actually be able to help your team in year one compared to Duncan Kid. And all routinely there at that range. So, yeah. 